So we're here with Katie, and she's going to talk about Five Nights at Freddy. So what do you think of the game? Um, scary, but more of a jump throw to it. More of uh, something that just makes you jump by having stuff pop up at you. Yes. So what night are you on? I'm on night three. Trying to figure out what's going on. Sounds like the fox is going to get you. No, the duck whale. Is, something's laughing. Is it in the other room door? Duck is there. Duck is there. Close the door. I did. So what is what what is you find so fascinating with this game? <laughs> the duck got you. So what is fascinating with this game for you? Um, I don't know, especially out this part. <laughs> and I can't believe you probably caught that on gameplay. You wanted a, a jump. <laughs> well, I have to agree with Tony on many occasions because it's really not one of those kind of games where um, if you really had to play alone, it's not fun. But if you play as a group, it gets really fun, like passing along the table. Seeing who can get past each day. Yes. As where it was fun watching CJ scare himself <laughs> with everything he read about it. And he's the one who should be going, just plowing through every day. Because he's read every Wikipedia article, every uh, clue book in, that they've had online. <coughs> My favorite character is probably the fox. Well, the fox has the most uh, showing in him. Yes. So... What would you say is the best thing about the game and the worst thing about the game? The best part is uh, um, it does pay off that it gives you a jump scare, but it doesn't make you so scared that you actually will have nightmares. So you feel Mark Plyer kind of over-exaggerated, almost acted that entire mentality out, that oh. jump scare is m more of nightmarish. A little bit. There's times where um, Markiplier did act a certain way where it was like, that wasn't so scary. Because even if you can sit there and watch him play it, I mean, he has a screen of the game. If it doesn't scare you, but it scares him, it's kind of questioning that he was acting. Because I was watching the gameplay and half the time... I wasn't scared. I mean, after... Okay, I'm sorry, I'm doing this. Um, the first night when he's playing it, of course you get scared. But after a nights go on, you start realizing which character will go out. So you don't get scared anymore. And if you maintenance your camera time, you can figure out which one's going to hit you. <coughs> yes. Like how I said about the duck. The only one that's an X factor is the fox. Yes. You have to just watch out the fox. Really, how the fox goes is you look at the curtain, get out of the camera thing, shut the door, then go down to the hallway where he's going to lead. He's going to knock on the door once you turn off your camera. Let him do that. Then go back to the camera. He should be back at his curtain. Then open the door after that. That way you are sure because... Last night for me, as I played this game, the fox got in the room after I reopened the door. But the fox also pops up when we're checking, you're checking the cameras, too. <laughs> it happened to me when I was playing around with it. They come out of nowhere. That's where you can predict when the monster, when the other one, <coughs> other three are, you just can't predict the fox. Well, I'm surprised is the bear does not show up until the end. Like, if you actually wasted your battery, the bear comes out. 
Besides the Golden Bear, the Golden Bear, you have to just look at the poster and get it there. Yeah. But, you gotta open that uh, Easter egg up, though. Yeah, and you can actually get out of it, too. As Markiplier showed us, you can just go back on your um, screen and head back out, and he's gone. It was like one of those moments like, you just got out of the Easter egg. From crashing your system. Yes. Because that's, the, that's the other thing that happened. With it. it crashes the game. I think he got very lucky. Yes. And that just told me that that one was actually real, like he didn't expect it. Because if he expected it, he would just would have let it go. So on a scale of one to five, like Tony, what would you give the game? I'd give it a four. Because I like the price range. You like the three dollar price range. I like the um I like how the game gives you a jump scare, and it's fun to watch everyone's reaction. Like, you probably enjoyed my reaction a few minutes ago when I got scared of the duck. But the but if you had to play it by <coughs> yourself, what would you give it? Because as a crowd, uh, as a, like a group game, passing it around... Well, there is one problem I don't like it. When I'm playing the game, like when the character comes out... It doesn't do the full animation. It just shows one picture, then a second picture, then you hear the scream like it should have been like, like, eh, but instead it was like, eh, eh, It's like eh. the game doesn't have the full uh, memory to uh, play out of the animation <coughs> or it's designed for a cell phone. Well, I truly believe um, the one I have on the tablet should probably be a little more fixed. Because I bought it with the app. I didn't buy the computer-wise one. Probably the computer one is more cleaner, I think, because Markiplier played it on the computer, so maybe it's And better. he had a lot of missing animations that the app version doesn't have. Yes. So... That, that also makes the fox <laughs> easier to see, too. I mean, the app just came out on the 27th. Yeah, the 27th. And this, today is the August 30th. So it's been about a few days. I got on the day when it came out because I wasn't paying attention. I was like looking up the game after we watched the Markiplier and we got this. So, yeah. so are you happy with the result of the game so far? Playing it with your friends? I really like the result because it gives everyone a chance to play around with it. And I personally like the idea of killing my friend Mike. He's a security guard. 